Tainer Universe, thank you so much to those of you that submit questions and requests to be featured here. Before we get started, welcome as always to those new to the channel and to the cane culture. If this is your first time on here, you're watching what you see, maybe you've seen other videos, the best way to not miss anything is to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. Today's topic is somewhat unique and is an extension of the anatomical targeting that we've discussed in other uh, segments when it comes to the cane. In other words, where are we going to strike and how are we going to do that? Uh, I've shared before that one of my top targets is to go ahead and take out the wheels. Tied into that is the discussion of the empty hand skill set that accompanies every cane self-defense application. For those of you that are new to American Cane Self-Defense, American Cane Self-Defense from its onset 20 years ago from day one has always had what we call an empty hand translation. Meaning that whatever you do with the cane, you can also do it empty hand for times you don't have your cane or you couldn't you know, was it uh, nearby, you had to reach for it, you just didn't have the time, maybe you lost it, you have to recover it. All those things have been taken into consideration. The question is, if you're targeting the lower body, empty hand, what does that mean? What would be the translation? Obviously, it's gonna be with your legs, and then do we have kicking in American cane self-defense? And if so, what does that look like? Before we get into the demonstration of that, I do want to say, and I, and I want to go ahead and point out, that American Cane Self-Defense from day one, regardless, you only have three mainline um, branches that, come, uh, that, that are the American Cane Arts. All three of them revolve around a cane with this J hook. All three of them have a concern for the quality of the cane and anything else is not part of the American cane arts. I know this because I'm one of the three mainline and I was there from day one pioneering this whole thing, right? So why is that important? How does it tie in? Because sometimes we have the discussion that, hey, you know, if, if you can go over here and you know, just a, a shot that's designed to uh, slow down the person, um, well, you're gonna slow down an individual if what you're using is a six, seven dollar cane that you purchased at the drugstore, right? So sometimes you come in, you're going to choose your cane bottom line with the way that you value your life. It's the same as individuals who ride motorcycles. You choose that helmet, right? Do you want the one that cost you, you know, X number at Walmart or, you know, the, the lower end? Or do you want the one with the proven track record that uh, is going to protect you if you're in a situation? This is exactly the same thing. We don't want you to engage in multiple strikes. Uh, we want you to strike with a bazooka, okay? And with that in mind, this, by the way, is a metal cane. Is a metal cane. This is the raven that I have here. But I'm going to exchange it for a padded drone so we don't hurt anybody. So the, 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 first, um, the first component that we want to look at in striking uh, down here uh, to, to the lower body is very simply coming out of the way and notice I'll show you how we use the cover hand. The cover hand is the hand that does not contain the cane. It's not called the other hand. It's not called your free hand. It's called the cover hand and it's usually here so that you're not presenting a, a target you're covering and at the same time it has functional use. So we're going to tilt the camera here a little bit so that we can uh, see this full fledged. But, but look at this first attack, and the attack could be a grab, could be a push, right? could be anything like that, could be a punch, exactly. And in the first area that we're gonna target is we're gonna target the area of the shin and the knee. The shin and the knee. And listen, I don't want any trouble. I'm in a standard grip. And, and something starts brewing here. You, you don't want any trouble. You don't want anything. So listen, I, I don't. And she moves, and there's the first shot is going to come down here. But notice this because my hands are up and I'm at an angle. Once I do this, I'm ready to come back with a follow up shot because that's the way that power shots. Our design, your template is designed to go here and then come here because we don't rely on just one shot. Got it? 
And so that does have an empty hand. Tilt the camera up and down. Can bring it down a little bit, right? So um, when it comes to the empty hand component, and to be clear, American cane self-defense, essentially you have two types of kicks, and that's the end of it. You have a cutting kick designed to cut. She comes in to cut the motion, right? So when you do this, it's targeting the knee, and that happens, or lower to the shin. It cuts the motion, regardless of where you're doing or what we call 45 degree angle breaks. And this is instructors and those that are coming to it. How do you know if this is of value and really functional for whoever it is you're working with? Well, uh, uh, have them do a very simple task. If they can stand on one leg, extend and bring it down. If they can go from here to here, or they can cross over with it, that's it, it's only three moves. If you can do this, if you can do this, and if you can do this movement to the inside, then so. If not, then you have two choices. Either you eliminate it or you work on it, which is our preference, and get better. Let me tell you what we don't do. What we don't do is use the cane. I often hear, hey, is it a good idea to use the cane to support yourself to get on one leg and extend that leg? And the answer to that one is absolutely not. And it has nothing to do with the cane or you know how much uh, weight your uh, cane can bear. This is all. If you're, if you have an American cane self-defense uh, 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 cane, that's never going to be uh, the issue. The issue is the following. The issue is that you don't want both hands occupied, all your weight on a supporting tool that can give way depending on terrain. Come up with one foot balance to hit a specific target. Here's the thing. She's not a heavy bag. Your assailant is not a body opponent bag without arms. He's functional, he's not a zombie also, right? Although I've seen out there zombies move pretty quick these days. But if I'm coming in here and doing this kind of thing, and if this does not stop the individual, remember what I said, you may need multiple shots. If my hands are here and I go to do this, She's, she can move, it's multi-directional. So she throws a punch, I do this and here I am, and there she goes and there's the tackle and you're out. You're out of business. Conversely, conversely, if your hands are up when you're doing this, notice with the cane, it'll look like this and here, but if I don't have that, it's the same movement with the head, and the hands coming in here. Remember wax on, wax off, <laughs> right? And so above the elbow, there's your stop. Now when she goes to turn here, she's dead, and I can go ahead and move, right? And so that's why you don't want to put all your weight and certainly not your hands on the tool. What you want to do is keep the other hand nearby. So that's one way. Where are we targeting here? We're targeting the shin and we're targeting the knee. The second way of doing this is to target now the fibula, the outside, the lateral aspect of the leg from the knee down or the side of that knee, right? And so I'm dealing here again, hey, I don't want any trouble. Boom, you are gonna knock that, that down. And, and once you knock that down, you're moving at an angle, there it is, you're taking out that knee and coming back. Notice that the movements, if I do a walk through of this, it allows me, I'm taking here, to knock it down, never away from my guard zone, it's right in place, I can immediately come out and take that, take that out from the outside, but not only that, it sets me up for that one, and you're striking full body. What is something like that? Look, that's that 45 degree break that is now coming here, and I had to come in and stop. Or, I got caught, I'll show you from this angle, um, with the cane, I got caught here, um, the attack, I'm in close quarters. The next thing you know, I have the shot that's coming here and I bypassed it using the cane. I'm gonna step and turn this way, turn. So you're here, I'm gonna step in. This is a strangulation, I bring it in. I'm gonna step in, lower the camera a little bit. Lift, 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 yeah, no, the other way, the other way, yeah. When I'm here, that's my 45 degree break. It doesn't work as well behind the knee. Okay, so let's analyze this. Stand, turn. I come behind, boom, well that leg is going to buckle. That leg may buckle, but that doesn't have the same effect. And, and 
We've tested this many times as if you're hitting bone, bone chips and breaks, right? People can still function, I know, with a hairline fracture. Yeah, they're going to be limping, but remember they're jacked up on adrenaline. When you come back here, there's a lot of padding. Yes, my knee can buckle, but that may not be enough. I'd rather go to the sides where you have, you have your medial and lateral collateral ligaments, right, to incapacitate. So you can't chase me now. When you go and you crush, think of sports, when you crush to the outside, you're damaging here, but the force also, you're damaging the medial collateral ligaments to, the, to that same side. The last part, the last way of targeting this thing is moving to the inside now, and in particular to the inside on the knee, right? So, so now this is where if you knock something down, she's coming with a roundhouse punch, and you move out of the way, that's how you might take it. That's the reach that the cane gives you. You're stepping back and taking it out, and guess what it does for you? It sets you up in the event that you have to come back down, right? So if I'm doing it from this angle, and we're gonna tilt here a little bit, right? And I do a catch, catch here to, an to anchor, and I see I can do this and use her now as I'm tilting her back to go ahead and bring that down and stun her here. All can be done with the cane as well. By the way, if I needed to see it here, she's gonna take the cane, that's fine. Boom, she's coming here, I'm gonna go ahead and stun. So there is a translation from day one in American Cane Self-Defense. Cane, an empty hand, or in this case, right, using your lower body. Very simple, here or here with the blade, of the foot or here, and we're very specific about where we strike, and we want to use applications that are gonna give us the best probability to follow up the hands always up here, and not relying, right, on having to put our full weight on the cane. So you're listening to all this, and you can always um, go ahead and, 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 and you're saying, well, Joe, if I'm saying things here that makes sense to you, but you say, where do I start with this? Because you're absolutely right. <laughs> There's a gap, right? You're not going to go from beginning guitarist to Eric Clapton just from watching this video. There's a gap in there. And we fill in that gap with a step-by-step -step curriculum. This is what I want you to do. Before you go to the site, before you think that you want to enroll, you need a DVD, you don't need any of that, please request the, just text, text the letters CCC, which stand for Cane Clarity Call, and it doesn't cost you a penny to do that. We come right back, the team will schedule you in less than 24 hours, we're gonna have a sit down, we're gonna talk about goals, where you are right now, and what your first big win with the cane should be, and how easy it is to accomplish that at home. But let's have that conversation first, so that we can learn how to serve you best. Okay, thank you as always for watching. Keep caning and stay safe.